Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 9, Romans chapter 5 verse 18, and Acts chapter 6 verse 3. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for this beautiful word. Thank you for being our guide and our God and being our Father. We love you Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9. But if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. All right. And so we know this is the actual, you know, scripture about why it's more important to marry. Right. So that people, um, don't end up in sin, right? Even if it's just in their mind, because if it's in your mind, it's the same as you committing those trespasses. So um, it's better to marry than to struggle and burn with that sexual um, desire and all that. Um, so God would prefer that. But this is also an analogy to um, why we need Christ, right? It says, but if they cannot exercise self-control. So we know that um, anything less than perfection is considered um, as filthy rags. All of our righteousness is filthy rags. Anything less than what Christ did, which is perfect, um, perfectly overcoming the law, um, it, it's going to be um, sin, right? If you do the whole law and you fail in one trespass, then you are a um, sinner, right? You are um, walking in sin. You are guilty of, of all of it, right? And so it says, but if they cannot exercise self-control, that is part of that, right? That, that, is, that is the result of one sin, right? And so that one sin is, is considered sin, is considered trespass, is considered um, less than the standard, right? So it says, but if they cannot exercise self-control, which none of us were able to exercise self-control, right? Even in the garden um, of Eden, when it was one rule not to eat of that tree, right? The self, they could not exercise that self-control, right? So anything less than perfection is considered um, a, a, a sinner. You're considered um, um, in trespass. And so um, it says they should marry. And who should they marry? Someone who is in self-control, right? So that they can be covered. And so that covering comes from Christ Jesus alone, right? And it says they should marry. And that is like, that is an analogy to marrying Christ. And so um, if you cannot exercise self-control, you should marry. All right. And the other part that the Holy Spirit was showing me was that it is better to marry than to burn. And so we know that, um, you need Christ, right? There's no other way to the Father. There's no other way to be led into the kingdom. And it says, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. So um, when you um, come under that righteous covering and you do fall, right? If you do um, fail, which we all do, right? We all end up, um, even if in a small way, you know, sometime in our walk, we just stumble sometimes. Um, you're covered, right? You are married. You're married to Christ. And guess what? He paid for all past, present, and future sin. He died once for all sin, right? So you're no longer, um, um, considered a sinner anymore your sin has been covered right your sin your debt has been paid all you have to do is ask for forgiveness right and he is he is merciful towards our iniquities and he will remember our sins no more 
All right. And so this analogy of marrying is also an analogy um, of, of the fact of the reasoning behind why we need Christ is because we don't exercise enough self-control to be perfect. And so therefore we need a covering of someone who is perfect and that that perfect covering comes through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And, and he, he will help us even when we fail at times. Um, none of us is perfect. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. And so he provides that covering, that blood covering um, for our sins. Amen. All right. And so the second verse that the Lord gave me was Romans chapter five, verse 18. Therefore, as one trust has led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification in life for all men. All right. And so we know that this is that same analogy of, you know, um, one man, right? Um, and his sin, Adam, was the beginning of what um, man began to let sin into their life, right? And so it says, therefore, one trespass led to condemnation for all men. All right. And so that is just speaking of Adam. And it says, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. All right. And so um, this is in a speaking of Christ. Right. And so how he um, died for our sins. And when he died, he died once for all sin. Right. And so all you have to do is receive that free gift of grace and it covers right all right and so if you read on into um romans 5 it it talks about how they are not the same right whereas one sin um led to death remember that standard is one right that standard is once you break into sin um you miss god's standard Right. And so um, then you are are condemned for all. You are guilty of all of it. Right. And so um, even though with man it was one sin um, with Christ, he died for many sins. Right. And so whereas that one sin could let, lead to death, Christ's love is so abounding and so great that when he died, he died for many sins. So it's not the same as before. It was one sin could lead to death. Christ died for many sins, right? You could have many, many sins, right? But because he died and he was perfect and he was innocent, he was able to make that transfer take place. So he died for many sins, one man died for many sins and so that created our justification all right and so remember go back to the analogy of the first um scripture it is better to marry to be covered than to burn because christ is our covering when you're trying to just exercise health control you are coming under the standard of the law Right. And, and you you're going to burn from that. Right. Because even one sin, everybody has one sin. Right. At least. And so we all need that righteous covering of Christ Jesus. All right. And so um, the third verse that the Lord gave me was Acts chapter six, verse three. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute full of the spirit and wisdom and of wisdom whom we will appoint to this duty. All right. And so this is speaking of um, when they were searching for um, men to help with the distribution to the widows. And so um, they had to find people who were, you know, accountable, who were very, um, responsible in their ability to to do a job do it well be consistent right 
And so it says, therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute. And so that means having a good reputation. And then this part says, full of the spirit and of wisdom. So they know who's more in need of what they can hear from the spirit. They can act and move um, as the spirit is leading them. It says, whom we appoint to this duty. And so um, this is something that they were going to have to consistently show up for, right? They were going to have to do the work of it every day. And so um, this scripture is actually a, um, a foreshadowing of what will occur when God is, is about to reward those who have been faithful. Right. Does it say that they were perfect? No, it's it, this is saying they have a good reputation and they are faithful. Right. And so um, when you are working for the Lord, when you are um, doing his will, you will be rewarded. Right. God is going to um, separate and, and divide up um, riches and wealth and, and give you a portion of the kingdom. Why? Because you have been faithful. Right. And so there is a reward for those who um, have been faithful and they will be picked out or set apart um, in this, in the fact of, um, when his coming in during his return, right? It says, therefore pick out from among you seven men of good repute. It's just like those analogies, um, that are speaking of like, um, the treasure of the kingdom of heaven, right? When he talks about, they're going to, um, the angels are going to put the net into the lake and pull up all these fish and they're going to drag them to the shore and then they're going to pick out those that have um that are good of good quality and everything else will be tossed away right or or um well, the analogy of the picking out of the wheat from the chaff right and so the ones that um the wheat from the tear, I'm sorry. And so the ones that are um, going to be reaped and put into the barn are, are going to go in one way. And then you're going to have those who um, um, were a part of the tear are going to go the other way. Right. And so um, here it's saying, therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute. And so that meaning that they have been walking that walk of faith right? They, they are covered. They're married. We already know their sins are covered. Um, we already know that they have been justified, right? By their faith. And, and, but these also have been working, right? These are the ones who are working. And so it says full of the spirit and wisdom whom we will appoint to this duty. And so those, there are people who are going to reign, right? Um, if you suffer with him, you'll reign with him. And so if you suffer through the work, if you, if you do the duty, if you, um, walk by faith and, and you are, um, are, um, doing the will of the father, God has something great for you in store. Amen. And so it's, um, it's it's going to be set apart. It's going to be a reward for the deeds. Now, is this the same thing as the justification? Well, not really, because um, if you look at this, everyone does not receive the same portion, right? Um, it, God is going to give eternal life to all who are justified. And so we are justified by our faith, right? We are made righteous by our faith, but a good reputation in, in the walk, right? Uh, a good reputation um, is, is a part of the duty that you have served in, right? And so this is picking out from among you seven men who are of good repute. And so the repute is, is of a past work, right? And of a past reputation. And so, um, yes, we should all be covered. We should all marry. 
But we all also need to do the work of God and walk with him, abide with him, stay with him and, and let him refine our character. Right. Um, make us better. Amen. And in that way, we can have a great eternal inheritance as well as that eternal life that comes from the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for the wonder and the beauty of your word. What can we say? It is you. It is life. It is strength to us. Lord God, help us to walk on this path that you are lighting us in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. If there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys. If there's anybody out there who, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he redeems his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to do just that. Amen. One of the best ways, I mean, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake is the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. Also, don't forget to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys take care and be blessed.